This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast, episode 444. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios here in Beachview, Pennsylvania. Beachview, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The neighborhood. The hood. The beach hood. Hmm. Uh, with us today, we got a crew in the studio. First of all, he is, well, John Chichilla with us here today. That's me. There we go. Getting the switcher you just, right. You're just flipping through the, flipping I was flipping through the different through. cameras. I was flipping it's through. It's like it's like camera roulette. <laughs> yes, it is. Who am I going <laughs> to land on? It's John Chantilla. He's a gadget guru at Big Bank International Esquire. How's it going Doing today? Doing all the techie things. Fantastic. Also with us, she is the... Uh, si- what, what? My button's not working. The nope, sandy. that's where it is. There it is sales and marketing and stuff over at the sh- scare sure. house. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds official. Yeah, that's, that's close I'm gonna, enough. I'm going to hide my Starbucks throughout our scenes. Oh, yeah? yeah. Is that what's going to happen? There's completely a Starbucks in oh, that cup. It's too natural during a podcast, though, right? Especially a tech podcast. Yeah, sorry. So yeah, I should have aged it like it's <laughs> the opposite direction in the time period. That's right. So you just need like a, a gauntlet of... Um, of drinkage, right? Yes. Instead of uh, your almond milk Starbucks <laughs> in a glass. In glass. Yeah. <laughs> also with us, first time on the Awesome Cast. I think you were on Wrestling Mayhem Show with us before, I believe. Uh, live. live. Live from PodCon. Oh, live from PodCon. Good evening, everybody. He is Charlie Deach. He is the publisher, editor, and general twice monthly um, uh, magician over at the Pittsburgh Current. Thanks for having me. And I said the right paper. You did. <laughs> Unlike I, me, I, I, I thought you were yeah. worried about me for a second. No, no, no. The only person to worry about is me. In that situation. So uh, you're, you're, you're part one of our two week stint of having newsy people in. Wow. Uh, nice to be first. So I think it's, there's a lot going on, uh, especially this past month. And I'd love to get some opinions from somebody in the biz and, and especially doing this kind of digital thing along with the dead trees alongside. So. <laughs> You know, I think it's going to kill my share of trees, though. Don't that, I, I? Oh, yeah. You got a good share of trees going out there. Yeah. No, I see the pile down at the coffee shop. Uh, but <laughs> so, no. And, and, and we do a great podcast uh, as part of the Sorgatron Media Network for the Pittsburgh Current as well. And full disclosure there, which you guys should check out. And a really good conversation with all kinds of different people. Yeah. From week to week. So we've had we've had them all. <laughs> we've had them all. Everything from musicians to um beer Polit- people politicians politicians uh to adult a film actress an adult uh, film actress that was sitting right where uh dutters is right now it was not dutters <laughs> i just not yet not yet <laughs> how are <laughs> things going over the scares <laughs> but anyways it seems like a natural transition that, it seems like that yeah it seems like the next step um i mean you, you, you're already trying things <laughs> at pro wrestling yes. i mean that just goes yes. right alongside right <laughs> I but, can't believe you haven't been approached to shoot something. Not yourself, but someone else would go and shoot in the scare house of a, an adult video. Adult, yeah. Yeah. That's a great idea. You're so, right. Some of our sets should, would be really good you for that. You should market oh, that. Oh, we're getting ideas now. <laughs> I mean, there is there is that um, the, the Sunset Lodge room yeah, that, that has a bed and everything. So, mm-hmm. I mean. Mm-hmm. Anyway. <laughs> anyways. Um, <laughs> we, talked about, we talked a lot about Dutter's exploits on the, on the Mayhem show wrap up last night actually you have a lot of wrestler names that we've come up with oh good as a part of it I don't oh, know. i'm so excited There's a lot of them are in the chat if you want to check out the wrap up from last night yes. anyways this is the awesome cast you can check out everything at awesomecast.com uh where you can subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast app and watch video versions on facebook and youtube and also at awesome cast on the twitter awesome cast media.com that's where you can hit up producer missy she's hanging out back there um and making sure everything's cool and and, and probably going to be messaging me when i screw things up 
Uh, if you want to be a part of our studio audience, or if you want to look into some great advertising options, you can hit her up at awesomecast at sorotronmedia.com. Also, we are here live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, and uh, we are also, we've switched things over. Well, Facebook is the thing that we uh, take a peek at usually um, for uh, you know the chat room and everything. We are streaming on the Awesome Cast uh, YouTube as well as the Awesome Cast uh, Twitter. But if you want to be part of the conversation, we are over on the Facebook page currently. Uh, you can also ask your Google Home to play us on Google Music Podcasts or uh, Amazon Echo to play uh, Awesome Cast on your TuneIn. I understand that these um, these vary based on your uh, uh, skills and such that your your device has. Uh, so you may have a different... I know and people have been telling us about like different ways that they're accessing it too, but we know it is... Some people just say awesome cast to, I believe, A-Train and, and it pulls up. So again, I might be have something that cancels it out. Who knows? Uh, but the, you are available on those platforms. Also, thanks to our streaming partners, RiversEdgePGH.com, where we're there Saturdays at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, and our friends on the 405Media.com that carry us weekdays at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, noon eastern time and uh thank you to our patreon supporters supporting us over at patreon.com slash awesome cast our friends at the coffee club five dollar level include matt weller john dickie de gore and john carmen i hope you guys have been enjoying the awesome cast after dark um discussions we've been putting up there and also our friend a longest running patreon supporter uh michael fedor at the fan of the show one dollar level so let's get into our awesome things of the week and we know there's been a lot of google and a lot of microsoft news with the conferences here uh this week and uh chilla i know uh one thing uh piqued your interest so uh google announced the pixel 3a which is their newer low cost device they're not um, getting glamorous with these names are they no definitely not creative um the starting price on it's three ninety nine, which in comparison for the starting price of the Pixel Three, it's seven ninety nine. I thought it was a decent buy. I, I saw they, that this is the best phone for for four hundred dollars. I'm sorry, the best <clears throat> camera phone for four hundred dollars. I can believe that. Um, Twelve megapixel rear camera, uh, front camera is eight megapixel. Um, it is a single camera, um, but the device. Comes in. I thought it was interesting. So it's 5.6 inch device compared to the three being a 5.5. Obviously, there's going to be a 3A XL as well. The processor is toned down compared to <clears throat> the typical Pixel line. Um, it's the Snapdragon 670 versus the 845 and the higher end models. I also thought it was interesting. Back they're bringing back the headphone jack. Really? So you're getting USB C and the headphone jack. Um, I was like, why not just throw a pair of USB-C headphones in there? And call Don't get day. me started with uh, USB-C right now, man. Mm -hmm. You I know how many dongles mm -hmm. are hanging off my new computer. <laughs> <laughs> but but I thought it was mm -hmm. interesting, too, because duplex um, spam transcription, the active edge squeezable sides, mm -hmm. um, and night sight are all included in the device. So pretty much you're getting, you're not getting dual cameras, and you're not getting... Um, the higher end processor, mm -hmm. but otherwise you're pretty on. Oh, and you're not getting wireless charging, but for the $400 difference in price point, I think it's pretty darn cool. And it makes me wonder like, Oh, could I get this just for playing around with all the cool, um, AR camera stuff they oh, get? We're talking at a $400 price point for just playing around, but there's no, uh, there's no like deals. Like you're not getting this as a subsidized phone. No, you wouldn't get it as a subsidized phone, but I'm sure the device is going to go on sale from time to time. So if That's they knock a hundred bucks off of it, yeah, and you're down to to two ninety nine mm -hmm. as a like a backup device, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It's pretty interesting. Plus, you you know, a you can automatically participate in the Android betas. And you're always going to get up-to-date operating system updates. Being that's a Google device. Um, <clears throat> you know, we always used to say before, like, it, it felt like when I was buying Google uh, Android devices here and there, I, I wanted to go with the Google because, again, you get all the updates. It's not going to go away. You don't have to worry about Verizon or somebody to wait for a carrier update uh, to get your updates, like, a couple months mm -hmm. later. Is that still the case? Like, w would you recommend going with a Google device over, say, Samsung or, or HTC or somebody else these days? I think it depends on what your capabilities are. If you want something like a stylus, you're definitely going 
like a with a Samsung Note. Mm -hmm. um, but then you're talking a nine and a thousand dollar plus price point. Right, right. I mean, so, it goes with <clears> it, right? Yeah, and I look at it this way too. So when we talk about three ninety nine, oh, that's expensive. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for four seventy nine, and hear me out on this one. For four seventy nine, you can oh. get the three A XL, which is the six inch model, right? Mm -hmm. I really miss my Nexus Seven, <laughs> and I think I paid four hundred for my Nexus Seven. Mm -hmm. I'm only an inch off, and I'm higher specced with the three A XL. So you really make out better. <clears throat> and I could, I mean, it's kind of like, yeah, I'm shy an inch. But I'm getting better camera, better a bunch of better options. I, I don't I'm, I don't know if you're in. I would look at it as here if you're in the if you're if you're looking for a phablet, and you're in the sub five hundred dollar price point range, and you're an Android person, buy it off contract and take out the SIM card. Let's call it a day. I, I don't know. I, I just see mm -hmm. the device is win win from a price point. Okay. Well, uh, look out for that. That's the uh, Pixel Three A. And is that available now-ish, uh, very, very soon, or what, what's the frame on that? I did not see what the release date was. It, it's, it's usually pretty quick with these guys. Yeah, usually they're We're lucky. It, we're there. surprised it wasn't under everybody's seat out there, So, but they don't really do that <laughs> so much anymore. They don't really Oprah the Google I.O. as much as they used to, do they? So, uh, Dutters, Are you yeah. have a little bit of a social media tip for us this week. Yeah. This is, I didn't know about this, but apparently mm -hmm. this has been a thing for a little while since November. Um, if you're using Instagram and you're posting an Instagram, there's an option to add alternate text, mm -hmm. essentially, for the visually impaired. I have accidentally had this pop up because yeah. like, I have had this habit of uh, using this display for, for display purposes uh, site that uh, Amanda uh, with Bull Pittsburgh showed me a few mm -hmm. weeks ago. And I accidentally <laughs> like don't save my text and have to go back. And this has been popping up as an option like somewhere through here yeah but. i was like this is exciting um but yeah i didn't realize it was in the instagram app mm -hmm. and it's it's pretty easy to get to essentially when you're posting something uh go down to advanced and within the advanced features it's in there write alt text describe what your photo is and what's happening in the photo and then mm -hmm. that's it so this is would this also help um searches as well you it think it sounds like okay so like they, that they yeah that could also be like a metadata thing, like back when we, uh, mm -hmm. well, back, I guess you should still be doing the alt tag situations, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when you're putting photos in your websites. Yes, like that's you, very important because as, as we know, as websites can go down and then you just have this big blank thing that says mm -hmm. something. Yeah, it, it's, uh, you know, and it does help also identifying pictures for coming up in Google too. Mm -hmm. So. Um, very important if you're doing website stuff. And especially if you're updating your website, because if it comes up with the wrong alt text. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've seen that before. You're like, oh, what? No. Yeah, what was that? <laughs> it'll, it'll crappy, be, crappy campaign number one. <laughs> it'll be interesting to see if they can use this to then also train AI. Mm -hmm. Because if it can start to understand, like if you could train AI using the image with the alt text, mm -hmm. you could run this through an algorithm and it would start to learn what is what. So it's it's interesting. And not that I think I think the accessibility angle is very important. It, I'm doing some research on that currently, and I'm amazed at the lack of technology in a lot of certain areas, as well as how much it is just as much people and process when it comes to making to to offering amenities or options for people that, that need accessibility options in the workplace. So so I think this comes in at an opportune time. Excellent. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna jump to my awesome thing because it kind of it kind of deals with the accessibility. I have never done a video production that had um, um, a live interpreter before. And uh, I got a you know, shout out to uh, my, uh, my new friends out there at Here Corp uh, over in Carrick. They do a lot of kind of uh audio stage setup i know we i know that they do like kind of the setup for the um uh millville music fest is coming up i believe this saturday if i'm not mistaken uh our friends over there that do that uh but but they do they do all kinds of concert work and everything and and they need needed some help with some video production 
So I actually had the opportunity to go uh, hang out with them over up at the Golden Dome. Uh, slight exciting thing for me because I the Golden Dome is the site of early 1997 ECW pay-per-views. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'd never been there before, so I was geeking out a little bit on that end. But also just being able to kind of uh, uh, play with some of their uh, video production stuff that they have over there. Uh, we were able to sort out. They brought a 30-foot projection screen. That we had to sort a uh, show with and share certain things. Um, for the first time, I managed to uh, uh, sort out a picture-in-picture picture, um, uh, situation with uh, similar hardware to what we use here. But they have a lot more stuff hooked up to their hardware than we have. Some really cool stuff. Um, but also, and this is the exciting part, guys. They had a confetti cannon. What? So it'll go off here in a moment here. Uh, but no, it was a lot of fun. A, 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 a really, really big class there. And it's just such, such a unique building. It's, it's um one of, somebody was looking it up because everybody was just like super interested uh, in this um, um, when we were uh, just setting up for it. And uh, this was one of just maybe uh, 30 dome structures like this in the country, I think. Or maybe if not the world. So um, some pretty cool stuff going on there. I'm still trying to find that confetti cannon. The fun part is I think the confetti cannon actually killed the live stream because, um, as you know, like I always say, like if you watch pro wrestling and you're watching on Monday nights and there's a lot of strobe lights or anything like that, boom, confetti cannon. There it is if you guys are on video. Uh, but some exciting stuff there. Uh, but, uh, you know, you got you to gotta watch. You don't. You, you know that, that shirt I always make fun of Chilla because it seems to like mess with everything. <laughs> Um, it seems to just like like break our compression on the on the site, you know, because you gotta you gotta watch stuff like that. Like again, like giant confetti, or you know, like at the end of WrestleMania, if they're dropping like tons of confetti, it just turns into a blob, you know. Or if you watch Game of Thrones, and it was way too dark, and you just saw black splotches coming out of the darkness um, uh, with the White Walkers, um, you know, is that wait, is that a White Walker? No, that's just a compression splotch. You know, that was kind of my my viewing experience with that uh, with that episode a few weeks ago. Do you think that'll get better over time, or do you think that's just something we're always going to have to deal with? Uh, I think that's something like I was watching via LTE, you know, from a laptop that was sit or an iPad that was sitting upstairs. So that was probably part of I had a reason. Um, you probably do better if you have a good connection and you're watching on HBO, you know, Go or something like that. But, but that's the, the biggest issue where the cable providers because compression is usually crap when you're getting yeah. on cable. Um, that's why even. Even when I do have cable, I usually usually end up watching my local channels over antenna because mm-hmm. it's compressionless. It's the nicest way to look yeah. at it. I would. That's when I pull up football and look at the blades of grass. <laughs> yes, uh, exactly. In, in, in HD, that's always that's always the fun thing. Uh, so uh, waiting for a visual alert over here. But no, it was good w- w- working with that crew and again, kind of seeing. You know, I've worked with that crews of different sizes and, and capabilities. And it was kind of interesting to work with them and learn from them um, with, with uh, video streaming. And uh, looking forward to actually, uh, we always talk about the hardware cup here on this show. Um, we're going to be working with that here next week. And uh, I finally have a reason to go <laughs> and not scheduled over. So uh, looking forward to that. So shout out to Hero Corp uh, for letting me hang out with them and uh, do some work there. Charlie, what, what do you have this week? You got some stuff going on uh, with Pittsburgh Current. We do. Um, I actually thought I'd be coming in here with the Spider-Man Homecoming preview, but no, I have uh, a great new product. Uh, <laughs> we could talk program. about that, too. But <laughs> no spoilers. A great new program from uh, the Pittsburgh Current, at least I'd like to think so. Um, we celebrate our one-year anniversary coming up in July. And um, so, you know, you start thinking about um, what the last year's been like, and um, it's been mostly fantastic. But, um, you know, we were ready to put out a newspaper um, it took us a little longer to um, be ready to run a business. And one thing that we realized <laughs> was um, one of the one of the b- biggest helps to us was um, small businesses helping small businesses. And mm-hmm. so this is sort of our give back. And um, one person who helped us a lot was Scott McTaggart mm-hmm. at Colonel's. Who, Mr. McTaggart, we all are familiar with, I'm sure. Yeah, also the Pitchworks per- podcast. Pitchworks he was podcast. just on here, uh, I think, a couple months ago. Scott and I were having a cup of coffee down at Muddy Cup, and um, we just started talking about promotions and things like that. And one of the ideas that came up was um, helping new businesses get their name out there in some way, shape, or form. That's how we can help new businesses. And so we're, we've, we launched today our grassroots advertising program. 
if you are, and it's also National Small Business Week, so we thought it was a good time to launch. If you're a small business less than a year old, and um, you can advertise in the Pittsburgh Current for a hundred dollars, get you an eighth page ad, and we'll even help you build it if uh, if you need that kind of help. Um, but it was just a uh, just a way for us to sort of as one small business to help others um, because getting advertising, you know, is, uh, it's expensive. And, uh, so this is our way to make it reasonable and to sort of let everybody in, uh, at a reasonable price at a ground level and, um, you know, let us help you out. That's good. I mean, it's a, you, you, you're, you know, with the current, you guys, I guess you're a small business in publishing and that's gotta be double hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard, there've been a few issues with, uh, media companies. Uh, just the last couple what of months. Is this? I'm sure. Yeah, no, it's we, you know, we picked uh, we picked um, a heck of a time to get into publishing, but we don't always uh, we don't always pick our windows. Our windows are open and we're pushed out of them. So uh, it's been, but and it's learn, been fun. And, and you learn to fly, right? <laughs> exactly. I mean, exactly. The alternative is not so uh, it's not so pleasing. But it's mm-hmm. it's been it's been a great time, and um, um, we got a great crew over there. And like I said, anything we can do to help out other folks, if you're interested, you can email Paul at PittsburghCurrent.com or Andrea at pittsburghcurrent.com and they will help you out and get you all set up so how about that spider-man trailer that was pretty good <laughs> that was pretty, it was pretty good it was uh very very connected to that last movie it wasn't it and a little where the guy popped up and he yeah. wouldn't answer the phone right <laughs> no, and there's a great line when they, it toward the end of that yeah the guy on the phone says to the guy bitch please you've been to space right exactly it was a great line <laughs> it's the only thing i love i mean i loved it all but that was fantastic yeah yeah oh uh, it's, it's, so it's always better when there's more nick fury that's right <laughs> that's right and i yeah, believe you can't me, go wrong colby smothers is there too I was yeah, I was surprised to see her make a comeback after being kind of dormant for a while. Well, she was dust for a year, uh, <laughs> so at least I almost just gave away a spoiler. But I, really I just <laughs> yeah. I literally almost followed that up with. <laughs> I mean, it's a week out, so yeah. it's not as yeah. bad if you let one slip. I mean, I, if you walk down a Wait, wa- you, you walk what down is a what is the Miss Manners? What is the Miss Manners rule on spoilers? Is it, I, I don't know. Here's the, the thing: eight though. months. But here's the thing: eight months. I'm just no. Kidding. God, like pop culture. Um, but here's the thing. I mean, the Spider-Man trailer itself is just a big spoiler for Endgame. So, yeah. I mean, to even talk and about And they waited it, a week. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. they, waited, they waited a week. a week. So that works, right? So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Hey, in the meantime, we do a lot of technology around here from sporting events to music video production to conferences and everywhere in between. Uh, our awesome team here at Sidekick Media Services, which includes Dutters from time to time as well uh, in various capacities. Uh, that seems very wide open. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> as you uh, covered as a sidekick of your superhero project, that hashtag next big thing uh, can uh, we can help you with. You can find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com, a part of here at the Sorgatron Media Studios. And, of course, a lot of things that we do and build and learn uh, as we've been doing awesome casts in the Wrestling Mayhem show over uh, 13, 14 years now has been part of what we do. Hey, that's how we do what we do for the Pittsburgh Current is, is based on what we do here with awesome cast uh, and a lot of the same setup and everything. So uh, thank you for you know great groups like Pittsburgh Current that do work with us and others all over the place and uh, SAE going out for SAE Formula and Baja here in the next couple weeks cross country for them as part of this go check out everything we do over sidekickmediaservices.com our friend Chris Whitlatch over on the awesome cast Facebook group has a well he has a video for us I didn't I this apparently popped up recently from uh, WTAE reminds me I need to reschedule our friend Bobby Cherry from over there uh, but apparently this bird was on the uh, traffic <laughs> cam uh, <laughs> somewhere and uh, and there was a side note from him uh, uh, that was uh, you know Disney has officially uh, hired this bird probably for uh, for uh, uh, the, uh, the next movie yeah no it's just like chilling and looking into that camera there uh, so <laughs> This is inevitable. This comes up every once in a while, right? And I love these profiling, like Ken's burn shots they're using in this piece here of the bird. So just hanging out, looking at you, saying hello, world. Uh, so, hey, enough cameras. You never know what we capture, right? I mean, just look at the, what dash cams did to us. Like, I can't believe we don't see more of this. Um, 
But I guess you're not always looking at those traffic camps to catch it right. Uh, also, uh, we have uh, from Dave Potter. Um, there's a Mashable article about the uh, Angry Birds is uh, entering first-person AR. He says uh, they're extending the Angry Birds in the real world. Uh, you you place the levels in your area and walk around the levels to play. I think this is something we saw previewed a while ago with AR, right? It wasn't like Apple or Google showing something where you, you, you like stacked um, Angry Birds like on your table yeah, I, I thought of we some saw sort? It, I thought we saw it from angry birds a couple months ago yeah i think apple had what was the one with apple had the one with i justine across the table and they were launching like wooden or they were trying to knock down wooden structures but i don't think there, it was, there was one of those angry but it birds. wasn't angry birds but i feel yeah. like i feel like we have seen like demos of this somewhere along the line it's not loading the video but we do have some stills there um so i presume this is is this an apple th- oh no oh no it just went to like ikea furniture I clicked on something I wasn't supposed to. Uh, You've but, broken the internet. Oh, no, I've broken the internet. Let's bring it back. Let's bring it back. I can't even like hit back on this. What is going on here? Oh, there it is. Uh, this is, uh, if you want to look it up, it is Angry Birds Isle of Pigs. It's coming. It. Oh, wait. This was already out in yeah. February? Inside a VR headset, though. You interact with a series of da, 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 AR Isle of Pigs. It's going to do the same thing to ios uh exclusive for now it's free to download and uh it will be coming sometime in the spring according to mashable.com it's available yeah the version so let me look it is available now so so it was okay the article has more okay this was just like a previous article okay so Uh, version one came out for ios on april 5th oh I can't they believe. made minor. They made minor issue tweaks and bug fixes April twenty sixth and April 29th. Nice. I feel like I want to lose a lot of time for this one. Do we actually need more ways to play Angry Birds? <laughs> there is. I lots think the original. Of, I don't think you can really. Improve I think this is kind of the ultimate way to play Angry Birds, isn't yes. it? Yes. Not yeah. unless you with, unless you take that bird from the camera and uh, chuck him. As long as they don't look like the movie birds that drink well, drink pee. Well, what would be interesting is <laughs> those, it, those it, bother me. If you could have one person be the the pigs and one person be the birds and like you could build your structure like minecraft Ooh. and then place your pigs and then the other person is the birds i think that would be a fun i could, I could get game. on board with that yeah that sounds good this is a good idea uh so sure we should make that happen <laughs> i'm downloading this now and, and i have the ipad hooked into the system so we could kind of demonstrate this so <laughs> let's see I'll, I'll set up some some blocks in front of charlie over there yeah and i'm sure it'll be just fine <laughs> uh, maybe we'll do that here in a little bit let me pull another story here before we uh give another plug to our friends um not a lot of stories i mean all the stories dropped like today <laughs> so uh thanks to uh ar uh, I'm sorry, uh, thanks to IO, wrong letters. Thanks to IO and the other stuff. Um, this is something I'm actually looking forward to. Um, you know, as you guys probably know, we, you know, I, I, I try to hit up all I can when I, I go on my traveling for work. And uh, one place I get to go here uh, soon is Rochester, New York. And uh, they have, I, I saw this place before. They have a, a um, oh, geez, I can't Dinosaur remember. Barbecue? No, 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 not dinosaur barbecue. <laughs> no, 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 that's a different show. Um, but they have a, a good like museum of play up there, and there is a video game hall of fame. And just announced, Microsoft Solitaire has been inducted into the World Video Game Hall of Fame in Rochester, New York, and that shares the uh, uh, shares the uh, uh, acclaim with Doom, Tetris, Pokemon, Legend of Zelda, and I do believe Mortal Kombat has also been added on as well. Um, I didn't know that Solitaire was technically taken away from Windows as of Windows 8, I believe. Yeah, up until 8.1, it was removed. Uh, but you can you pick can up, download it from the store. You can you can get a Solitaire like group of, of some sort uh, under their ca- casual game game banner, I do believe. So I have it on a three and a half inch floppy. If you need a it was copy. oh thank you thank you um, that's the only way to play it is on a three and a half inch floppy. Um, they barely updated it as they went either, too. It was mm-hmm. like it was still the same animations, maybe a little little less pixely. Um, it was added in early Windows to teach you how to use a mouse. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does make sense. I mean, that's and then also it's what everybody played. It's also fascinating. Like I don't know how many times I'll be somewhere in public and somebody's just playing solitaire on their phone. Like it's carried over pretty pretty so, well. So 
my dad has, I think, an iPad Air 2. Mm -hmm. and, and all he plays is and, a, and Wait a minute. No, no, no. And so, it's a solitaire machine? So we, <laughs> he has an iPad Air 2. Mm -hmm. And he has an iPad Gen okay. 2. Okay. From like 10 years ago. And the, the Gen 2, that's all he does with it. It's just a solitaire machine. <laughs> <laughs> and he like, it's like he doesn't want to give it up. Yeah. Like, just put solitaire on the new iPad, Dad. Nope. That's the solitaire machine. Mm -hmm. I wonder if the museum display will have a little calculation of how many work hours have actually been lost, how many corporations <laughs> had to shut down because yes. of employees. The number keeps going. Like solitaire, yeah. right, like the McDonald's sign. It just keeps going. Yeah, up and up and up. yeah. Like, I remember, I remember in school, like, like they had that... You know, in the 95 days, the Windows 95 days, like they had that like overlay software that tried to block everything, including solitaire. Right. And of course, we found a way, way around it. Katie, Katie, do you suffer from a solitaire addiction as well? No, not. I should now. I'm excited about it. I, should, I was like, I forgot about solitaire. Can I get solitaire on my Mac? <laughs> Mac? I need this. I need this on my Mac. Oh, there's plenty of apps out there, I'm sure, for it. Oh, I'm so. just surprised it took so long to get in. Yeah. Like, I feel like that should have, but I don't know. It's the museum's only been around yeah. since 2015, but it's like, it feels like one of those things. It'd be like, this is the grandfather. Yeah, <laughs> this is where we started. I feel yeah. like this museum's got some kind of screwed up uh, priorities on what's in and what's not. <laughs> Donkey Kong didn't get in until 2017. I mean, right. let's do these things earlier. Well, this, this, Games like Mike Tyson's Punch Out yeah. aren't even in it. This They're, game, uh, well, I don't think this museum's very old, right? Well, listen, I like mean, what's, what's the, like, how do they come up with, like, the potentials I, for induction. I think it's fan like, votes this, or okay. fan nominations. I think you're talking about the. So you, so you have to know this place exists, right? <laughs> <laughs> Good call. Uh, the solitaire uh, lobby got on board this year. They loaded up the National Museum of Play Institute. The strong, yeah, the strong Institute of Play, <laughs> which sounds interesting to begin with. No, I remember seeing flyers for this place, and it is like you know, there's a lot I was of kind there, of, and I wish I would have known about it because I would, I would have, I would have definitely. Stopped. Well, a reason for you to go back to Rochester, right? Believe mm -hmm. me, there's not a lot of reasons to go to Rochester. So, uh, yeah, I'll have to check this out along with they have that. A VR, uh, they have a VR gaming area in this, in no, in the in Rochester. Like, there's a if you know where the Rochester Institute of Technology. I'm aware where their of that. bookstore is. Okay. Which is a Barnes and Noble. Okay. Um, <clears throat> in that same plaza as the Barnes and Noble is like a VR gaming center. It's like right on right on campus. It's it's a little off campus. Okay. Like their bookstore campus their bookstore adjacent. used to be on campus. I feel like I'd lose a lot of time. It's moved down the street. If there was a VR on campus ish situation. It's yeah, it's it's I mean it's a hop, skip, and a jump. You're like <laughs> It's like two turns. I may then I may sneak away during Tech Day uh, when I'm up there. I just have an issue with Ms. Pac-Man not being in this damn Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. but Halo is, and not even like the original Halo. But, no, Combat Evolved. No, no, that is the original uh, Halo. Is it? Yeah, Combat. Yeah. It was originally just Halo Combat Evolved. Well, it's even dumber. <laughs> I love it. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it, it was. I mean, Miss Pac Man. That's like the first uh, iteration of women's rights in video game, right? Exactly. So, Cubert. Oh, well. I mean, if you start naming characters, iconic video game characters, yeah. it's just this is. I'm gonna boycott this place. Not boycott. <laughs> I'm gonna pick it because I want to make a difference. I don't want you to stop going there, but I want to make a difference. Your, what would your picket sign be? I don't know. Uh, like, I feel like we could get creative with that. <laughs> gobble this, Miss Pac Man. <laughs> Miss Pac Man to the Hall of Fame. Something like that. Oh, gobble this up. Uh man. Uh, <laughs> oh, I need a second on that one. Um, I will go to Ed. I'll give me a minute here. Hey, want to give a shout out to our friend Alex Cars out there on the left coast. Uh, putting together the puzzle of design and media from branding to print the digital projects. Alex can do logos, merchandise, website, photo, video projects, so much more at Alexander. Or I'm sorry, Alex Cars dot media. That's K A H R S dot media. Go check him out over there, Alex Cars dot media. Uh, he is uh, in the chat room a lot, hanging out with us, and uh, does a he does a few projects along with us here at Sorgatron Media Psychic Media Services as well. Thank you, Alex, supporting the show, supporting them back, and so uh, you're with us for for so long for this, uh, Alex Cars dot media sorry i was tripping up because i'm looking in here and i'm seeing bc steel uh our friend from uh from another show uh he says i'm a hipster i prefer real world solitaire you know i don't so i was introduced <laughs> to solitaire by that and then realized oh wait i have a deck of cards 
but screw setting this up. <laughs> <laughs> I have to shuffle. Like everything. I gotta shuffle. I need to. I got. I need to. I need to make the rows and make sure they're straight. Then what happens when you win? The cards aren't going to go. You know. Just throw them in the air. Throw, around. Yeah, just, just throw them up in the air. <laughs> oh, geez. the video version probably extended the 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 life of a lot of professional solitaire players. They're probably going to play a lot Wait, later past pro- their past pro- their prime. Professional solitaire, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be a league. Now I'm going to look that up. Is there Profe- a professional soli- soli- solitaire league? I mean, it meets one hour after the Yu-Gi-Oh league. <laughs> uh you mean Yu-Gi-Oh? Yu-Gi-Oh. Is it Yu-Gi-Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh or Yu-Gi-Oh? I Is this know. a GIF and GIF situation? I've, I've been be. saying it wrong all these years. I don't know. Yeah, I, I would bet that I'm saying it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> if we're going to go with it, right? <laughs> I know. I think I watched a little bit of the cartoon. I think it's like, I don't know. Who knows? I don't know how that translates. Um, anyways, we got a bunch of stories. <laughs> Is there a site that has everybody that's on that? I haven't found it. You have to go and find out. Like is Commander Keen in there? <laughs> Commander oh, Keen. Oh man. Yeah, there's not a ton, I'll show you. Jeez. What was the what was like the like early like DOS game that you like beat the heck out of? I had a Paperboy too, I, I really enjoyed. Uh oh. What was the one uh, What was the one where you weren't a knight, but like you ran around the forest? Oregon Trail? No. Have you seen There's the a castle and it was all the text based and you like you you would barely there get There were like, some that was text based like the first ones were text based. I've never played a text based game like that. It was one of the first games that I saw that had a joystick. Mm. Mm. That was a big deal when you got the game pad that plugged into your sound card for some reason. Yeah. Those were the, those were the days. Uh anyways. <laughs> um <laughs> we got stuff in uh we have some uh some news um uh that you guys put in here uh Dutters, uh, tell us what google euphoria euphonia what euphonia. is euphonia so talking about um accessibility and um they're working on a new project it's called project euphonia mm-hmm. and they're working to make voice recognition work with people with speech impair- um, impairments okay including alzheimer's okay. um or, i'm sorry um king's quest sorry <laughs> that, that was it that was <laughs> um but um, with the ALS, they're working with the ALS uh, Therapy uh, Development Institute and the L- ALS Residence Initiative. Um, so they're essentially kind of building. The problem is, is there's not enough information um, and data for them to be able to um, kind, I kind of figure out the, the different voice patterns and things. So they're talking about this whole creating this voice recognition and they're asking people who... Um, are able to help to send in some training data. Essentially, they want people to, um, if they're asking if you have a slurred or otherwise impaired speech, to submit voice samples. Mm-hmm. So they're able to get more data and be able to um, kind of get this thing going. It's pretty cool. So I, I imagine that I, I can see where they'd probably have problems getting data because, you know, people in this position probably aren't really cons- considering using these technologies. I mean, we have a great base of people that can just... That 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 can normally talk and, and interact with their phones, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, but that can definitely be a system. I mean, I'm thinking about we did a piece uh, several years ago with the Pittsburgh Foundation uh, talking about ALS assistive technologies, and I think we may have talked about it a little bit here as well on the uh, Awesome Cast back in the day. I don't mm-hmm. know if Chilla, you were around when I we did know. that. Uh, maybe it was a, an extra interview we did. Um, and realizing how much of that, you know, from the face tracking to the eye tracking, you know, plus the voice recognition is all you know, here walking around with us every day, right? Mm -hmm. Um, You know, versus all that stuff that kind of adapted to the PCs of of the day. Um, So it's kind of interesting to see, like, this should certainly be um, far more um, um, available these Mm -hmm. days. So, I mean, mean, there's tons of assistive technology just built into these guys uh, to begin with, right? If you start turning those on. That's cool. So this is a Google, uh, this is a Google initiative. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can go check that. Is there a website for it, or it's just part of their? There was there. It's just part. This was part, part of, of IO. Yeah. Okay. And there was a video talking about that a little bit and, and talking about some of that uh, assistive technology and showing some of it off mm-hmm. there. It's you know, just the eye tracking to like, um, you know, type mm-hmm. is fascinating because you, you get to a certain point you can't move your arms or anything. So, uh, especially with ALS, mm-hmm. so, incredible. Chilla, what is A Train doing now? Mm-hmm. 
So Atrium, and I know, I didn't realize you had this in the top of the list too. I think. I think we did. I think yeah, we, it was one of We yours. did both through this. Um, so A Train, the that would the, be the Amazon A Train, the Amazon Echo, A Train, Amazon Echo A Train app. Um, we should just start calling our computer because that's one of the keywords <laughs> too. Is it now? Yeah, you could use that back from when Batman. Yeah. Came out Batman Lego. The really? Movie came out. Yeah. They they added computer to the list of keywords. I mean, which also kind of applies to the keywords. Star Trek experience yes. as well. Yes. Um, I mean. So there has been an, an A-Train slash computer mm-hmm. app um, for Windows for a while. It, I think it started launching on a couple select PCs and then they added it to the store. Okay. Um, recently, they have made it where... And you could kind of tap a button and give a command and it would act just like any other amazon device Mm -hmm. um they have now added the ability to just use the key phrase so it's always listening um i'm interested in i haven't played with the app i don't know if you've installed it on windows i'm interested do you get the screen version like do you get the the spot type I'll be interested to find out there. I have, well, I have like, a Windows 10 computer right in front of me. Well, because I have like a bunch of old Windows, to, like old, old, like atom based processor type devices. Oh, yeah. You don't want to do it on that, right? But why not? If it, that's all I'm going to do with it is just leave it in the corner of a room plugged into a TV. I, imagine I can have a big screen Alexa type Let's interface. See. So here it is on the on the Microsoft store. Oh, oh never mind. It's loading something. Let's see if it has any screen. She's taking over your computer. Yeah, she's taking over my computer as as we speak. So they're starting to download. You've been assimilated. Uh, Requirements, yada, yada, yada. I'm curious on requirements. It doesn't really give. It just says x86 architecture. Yeah, so you could run it. So, Adam, you wouldn't want to do it on an Adam, right? Why? Right? No? If that's all you were... If I Think about it like a Raspberry Pi, right? If this is all the device was going to do... Mm-hmm. And you could set it up in the corner That's of a plenty. room. I mean, how much how much processing part is sitting there on your on your Echo, right? Or your Google Home or, or whatnot, right? Uh, yeah, I I could think about like I could make this like a hub type device in my kitchen. <gasps> you can get like one of those Intel Nooks, like an older one or or, or something like a little, yeah. little basically like little like Mac Mini size, uh, um, you know, Intel based um, uh, computers. So 150 megs, if you're wondering. <laughs> Yet it still takes a minute for this to download. Okay. Um, no, I think so. Is it getting crowded on your Windows PC now? Uh, now that A Train and uh, uh, C C Word, I don't know. Keep she, like, she's not the C Word. <laughs> Sorry. C-word. <laughs> Whoa. Not that C Word. Whoa. What are you naming your computer? <laughs> but she doesn't activate via voice. I thought they took that out. Did they take that out? I swear she's she's popping up over here as I've been mentioning her. That's why I started changing it to the C word. <laughs> um, I'm actually loading it right now, Chilla. Um, so let me go into her settings. So we have the C word and then the A word. Oh, and then... So I have it turned off. Oh, I don't let. It may default. It may default off. Okay. I don't let Cortana respond to oh, Hey Cortana. Let's see. You get the little app here. You got to set up. Um, a train. I need to. I need to use my login here, uh, which I don't remember at all because I have a crazy big password. Mm. Okay, well, I'm not getting very far with this right now, Chilla. Uh, we'll play with that later. Maybe that'll be for after dark. Anywho, uh, let's see where we're at with stuff. Katie, yes. I technically have this one, but I, <laughs> I think you saw this other one. Uh, your favorite website. Your favorite tech company. Mm-hmm. Out of out of Canada, which we discovered <laughs> yes. with the Butterfly Effect podcast, um, has yet more tech news for us. Social media news this time. Yeah, uh, so Pornhub wants to buy Tumblr and restore its uh, adult content. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I, I was never much. I didn't get into I, Tumblr too much. I never do- dove into the dark side of Tumblr. Yeah, um, I put Smurf drawings on it and my Q cat, and that might be still out there actually. <laughs> That sounds like the dark side of Tumblr, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you all about the dark side of Tumblr. Smurf drawings uh, on Tumblr, yeah. So, I mean, this is... It, it, this is... So, I have mixed feelings about this. One, Pornhub has a reputation. If you're from... Not just that reputation, but they have kind of a reputation of... Um, I don't want to say taking advantage of, but kind of taking advantage of talent. And um, 
different situations um, as far as making money. Money, profits kind of their main objective a lot of times. But on the other hand, Tumblr's blocking, like this is one of my issues too, working with different companies is, is blocking any sort of nipple. You know, women nipple is just automatically in a lot of its artwork and it's you you know what i mean it's it's very much very specific like blocking very sex not necessarily sexually explicit things but anything like adjacent to sexually yeah anything and they've just kind of like across the board gone and it's it's essentially i don't I know the like sound it effects with the story right now gone. well this this was their knee-jerk reaction right to getting removed from the store uh, I think it was yeah. yeah so so tumblr rewind tumblr got booted from Google Play and Both the iOS of App Store. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. so. Because of the prevalent because of, because of child pornography. Right. Yeah, we have okay. All so right. so Apple and, and and other companies found out that there was they were not monitoring their content. Mm-hmm. So they removed them from the store. And then I feel like the easy way out was let's not take care of a singular kind of content let's just ban it all yep mm-hmm. um I, I i would love to see the and and pornhub's really good at this i would i think i mentioned it last week i would love to see the pornhub analysis of people fleeing tumblr wait so you want to see that ban came under like, effect. Uh, like and, you know those know pornhub we we are fascinated because they have these like big data dumps right yes. um th- based on you know phenomenal the analytics they are a tech company and it's very fascinating like, if you go through their their uh blog pages and we were looking at uh, pornhub cares and everything um so so you want to see that that kind of thing the other thing uh, uh, you know not only the porn in in that adjacent thing one of the things that uh one of the the sources i was reading listening to uh was saying not only is the part the pornography groups take uh, kind of eliminated but a lot of the um uh, subculture communities mm-hmm. you know the, like of the l you know uh, the uh, LGBT and adjacent groups um, that you wouldn't find in a lot of different places got the axe too, mm-hmm. eliminating, that, eliminating that access that could really help somebody. Yeah, it's a safe. So. It was a space, safe space for a lot yeah. of people. Oh and yeah, and they were just like, nope, that's this goes against. Yeah, sorry, sorry, too Dark. close. We're too scared. Mm-hmm. Um, there it goes. And I can't remember who owned them at the time. Is this under the Verizon? This was under this the Verizon, Verizon name, well, it which is wild if you think about it. Like, why is? Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't over like the AOL Yahoo area or is it pre post Verizon um uh, but, but, I but mean, that it, band that band was while Verizon owned them okay it okay. wasn't when Yahoo owned them so that it definitely seems like a Verizon yeah. based thing cuz that was just yeah. recently that was within the last mm-hmm. x amount of months um was it late last year was it like I don't want to mess it up <laughs> Tumblr <laughs> yeah Tumblr went from oh gosh Tumblr it, was ban. A, it was an oath company, and now it's a Verizon. It was subsumed media group. by Verizon with the yeah. acquisition of Yahoo. Yes, which AOL was under there. Too. Yeah, so it's just like, like burr, burr, burr. AOL, yeah, yeah, yeah. December seventeenth, so yeah. it wasn't that long ago. Mm-mm. Yeah, so starting December seventeenth, Tumblr banned all adult content. It seems like it was so much longer ago. Can you? Um, but I, I look at it, um, and I, I feel like Instagram struggles with this. Right, there's a little bit of well, we when we had Michelle James on the yeah. Pittsburgh Current, she talked about how how Instagram was really rooted for the pornography industry, Twitter but, as well. Twitter, for example, Twitter too. yeah, you can't um, if you're interested in seeing the work of Michelle James, you can't go to Twitter and search Michelle James. I forget what the the process is, but you literally have to um, you have to know the person's uh, uh, handle mm-hmm. to 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 get them because they won't they just won't show up in in, in just a they just, just a random search. they just knock right. them out of the algorithm right yeah and a lot of that has to do with the um, the uh, the law last year that is kind of hidden under the guise of a, a law to stop sex trafficking and human trafficking which no one here obviously is is against but it, it took some I'm against sex some sex over traffic. Oh, I mean that. I mean, <laughs> what? I'm against human I'm trafficking. I'm against sex trafficking. I mean that. <laughs> I meant that. This is like when we said uh, marathons. No one's really in, against right, it. But this is like when we said I'm, marathons in support of breast cancer <laughs> back in the day by accident. Yeah. Everyone is. Uh, every everyone is against sex and human sex trafficking, human trafficking. Mm-hmm. Right. But the law um, really it overreached and it hurt a lot of legal sex workers who who were making a living and it. And that's why sites like Tumblr and others um, 
you know, had to sort of, there was no, there was no clarity on where the law could reach, reach out to get you. And so that's where I think a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, uh, sites decided to play it, um, more safe than sorry, but that's taken an effect on, um, or made an effect on sex workers. Mm -hmm. That's uh, it's interesting. So, so, um, Again, I am against human trafficking <laughs> in all forms. Yeah. Now he's worried about that pull yeah, quote don't, that don't somebody's going to grab him on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always wanted to be in the news for one of these shows. And, it's uh, going to be this one. It's going to be this one. Thanks, Charlie. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah who would have thought that'd be the... <laughs> it's usually this one. Uh, but anyways, um, no, it, it, yeah, so it, the, the, that media... I, I need to look at the, you know, the, the media... You know, it's just another media conglomerate at that mm-hmm. point, too. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm not even sure what is under that Pornhub umbrella. I know when we were looking at it, it was just like there was a lot. Like, basically, the porn industry online. So, it's still fascinating. And, yes, we're going to keep talking about porn here on this tech podcast. Hey, we want to talk about awesome things in technology. And uh, that is mostly it. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of it. That checks all the boxes. <laughs> hey, drones are really popular. Did you know that, guys? What's a drone? Uh, what's a drone? What? <laughs> wait, what'd you ask? <laughs> I said, what's a drone? <laughs> what's a drone? The thing? Wait, wait you are not, that's that thing. I, that I looks, did it as my awesome that, thing of the week last yeah, week. Yeah, that's the thing right. that looks like Iron Man that you had come in last <laughs> yeah. week. Jeez. Uh, by the way, do you have your other Iron Man thing that we gave you here today? It, it, it's it's, out of, it's oh, over, no. over yonder. We handed him an Iron Man. Uh, um, that's going to be my awesome thing of the week next week. Oh, okay. Shh. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Um, but, uh, apparently commercial drones are way more popular than the FAA, FAA expected. They expected a growth of 44%. The actual growth was 170%. And remember, there's a long time where they were just, we were just waiting for the rules, right? For, so anybody could register. And I've had at least, at least a couple of people show me their FAA license, uh, with, com- with their commercial drone use. So, um, yeah, that is a pretty significant issue, and I'm sure that doesn't count Amazon. <laughs> so, actually, I might count Amazon. Maybe half of that is Amazon. Um, Does this include like the small drone you can put like in the palm of your hand? No, no, no. We're talking of... commercial drones. <clears throat> We're talking about okay. people with like at least a thousand dollar DJI, right? Okay. That you know they are like filming flyovers at at a speedway or something. You know, this is the full commercial you know it's not that little like hundred dollar um flippy thing okay so okay so there's 277,000 registered commercial drones but 1.25 million personal drones right right i could not just buy a drone off the shelf and go fly it uh in certain air spaces uh basically so um hey the they're dealing with it <laughs> so I mean, it's good that the certification is out there and 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 watching that grow but the enthusiasts i mean i just i just think this is so accessible you already have an rc uh plane and you know enthusiasts out there mm-hmm. and, uh, they're going to jump on it and, and then it seems like a cooler thing for people to jump on too you don't need a runway Microsoft was having their announcements yesterday, and the most interesting thing is their browser, because Microsoft is coming back to Mac OS, so there's yet another browser for I can tell people to not freaking load when we want to use Zencaster for our project, guys. Please just stick with Firefox and Chrome. <laughs> but why? So because the... Why do you care? Because the browser is based on Chrome. I don't... I'm sure there will be reasons for it to not work. Um, so, wait, is this right? Are they using the Internet Explorer E for the dev on this thing? Or is that an Edge E? It's the Edge E. Now, I did see a thing With that the there's... the yellow a, dev. Now, there is, there is an Internet Explorer mode... I saw they were rolling out in some of these Edge browsers. That's that's browser isolation. So they're just making... Wait, wait, wait. wait this browser isolation. That's for Windows, though, isn't it? That's not going to be on Mac. Well, likely. Uh, I imagine. I would hope that... So today, so today in, in the enterprise world, you can actually set it where... By the way, Krauss just said, hey, now, in the chat, <laughs> so he can correct us on anything we're screwed up here. So, so the... Um, uh, and by the way, Krauss, no. Edge, Edge is a problem in my work, <laughs> so... Well, that's because it uses their. That, that's my point, though. Is Edge today uses Microsoft's proprietary rendering es- engine? Right. They're moving that entire engine to Chromium. Yeah. So it's just going to be. It's going to be but Chrome and and Microsoft. There's plenty of WebKit, Chromekit, 
browsers I still can't use though. Right? It, but is it WebKit or is it is it actually based on ChromeKit? That, that's true. That's a good question. So I would I would yeah I would say you're I would see more issues with a WebKit browser. Mm -hmm. I would see more issues with Microsoft proprietary. Then followed up by WebKit, then followed up by ChromeKit. That being said, back to the whole IE thing. So today in the enterprise, we realize that there are websites that have not been optimized, nor do they render properly in things like Chrome or Edge. Um, they need the old IE browser engine, whether it be to launch ActiveX to do a number of old craziness. Um, Active in the X, enterprise, wow. in the enterprise, you can actually set policy that says if someone types in this URL, then go to then pop Internet Explorer. Like if you're going if you go into Edge or you go into Chrome, mm -hmm. there are plugins for Chrome and policy for Edge that will force launch Internet Explorer, but it launches in a separate window and it actually launches Internet Explorer as a, as a secondary app. It will now launch as an isolated application, but in the same set of tabs. So it makes it look more uniform to the user. Okay. Um, but you're actually launching an instance of Internet Explorer 11. I think it is 10, 11, whatever. Really? Yeah. Um, so in, even on Windows 10 for, for home users, they still have the option to use the old IE and not use Edge. Wow. Um, and then they're bringing that edge because they're basing it on Chromium and Chromium's already been ported to Mac OS. Yeah. It's not that hard for them to just launch. What I'm, in, I'm going to, what I'm interested in is their, their bookmark. How do they handle bookmarks? Cause that's all I care about. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I think the people that still like internet explorers still like to hit themselves in the face with baseball bats. Cause I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a horrible, horrible. See, I'm not a lot. I like I like Firefox, on. and I prefer Firefox, and I really prefer Safari. Uh, I will. Uh, it's kind of a techie thing. Um, so that brand new laptop I got, um, I got a a um, out of application memory on it, 16 gigs, brand new MacBook Pro, right? Um, the higher end one, I, whatever I could get at Best Buy, right? Um, and I was like, well, wait, why, why am I getting a force quit? I have all this Ram. I have all this hard drive space, so I can't be running out of that. And I look it up. Firefox is taking up 128 gigabytes of memory. I am pretty, I, I think I know why it did it. Yeah, but what is, uh, how often do you look at what Chrome's using? Because I'm guessing no, no, it's no, no, not no. that far off. 128 gigabytes. So? gigabytes so your hard drive is 512 well it's going to swap between yes. real memory and disk space yes i think what happened was i was uploading a lot of videos to vimeo and i think it cached all the videos in the memory <laughs> for it because that's one point i was trying to push like 25 videos up to vimeo at a time there are probably two gigs a piece and um i think it just cached everything in there like copied them all over from the hard drive to the main and it got real weird anyways Hey, you know what we can't run out, uh, uh, you know, get enough of? Our friends at Slice on Broadway, uh, our good buddies up here in Beachview, right on the tracks here, uh, as well as over at Carnegie, PA, East End, and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. They've been supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for a good while here. Please go check them out. Stop in. Say hi. Let them know when, that the awesome cast sent you. And uh, they've been one of the longest supporters of the awesome cast in uh, several of the fine programs here on the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network, uh, helping feed our guests here in this uh, uh, dinner time uh, production that we do here every Tuesday. So you go check them out, sliceonbroadway.com, and find that one in your neighborhood. Uh, so, uh, so just as that, so Chrome, Chrome on my Windows machine right now is using 4.6 gig. Yeah. Of memory and that sounds good and fifty percent of my CPU. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I went to Firefox on on, on uh, Mac because it's even worse, right? Yeah. So, anyways, uh, Charlie, thank you so much for joining us. It was absolutely my pleasure. What is going on with you guys? Anything for people to look out for at the Pittsburgh Current? Yeah, we have our uh, summer guide coming out this coming Tuesday. Um, 
if there's uh, the theme, I don't want to give the theme away. Cause we're, <laughs> the theme is wet and wild, so I'll let you marinate on that after okay. porn up all I've been all seeing some of those ads lately for that one film festival. They've been racy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, the, uh, did, the wait, 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 wait. Re- remind us, uh, since we were just talking about Pornhub, you yeah. had a sex issue, and what was the um, what was the the survey that you had everybody take? Oh yeah, it was uh, it was just a uh, a survey that we came up with in our demented uh, heads, and it was called uh, what was it called? Was it called How Yin's Banging? Oh, How Yin's Banging, yeah, How Yin's Banging survey, <laughs> patent pending, <laughs> copyright, there trademark. You trademark. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, the Hallions Bang and uh, that sounds like a, a sex like a, quiz, like a good podcast mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> coming soon from Pittsburgh Current. <laughs> no, never, never, no, no, no. no. <laughs> maybe we'll take over here at Sorgatron Media. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Katie will be the host. Yes, uh, you want that? Oh, that would be you so can, much fun. if you want that. You can have that. That'd be so much fun. <laughs> It was just well, it's our spinoff Pornhub show. They don't want nothing to talk about on this show. Yeah. Uh, hey, Charlie, if you have a few minutes, I'd love to have a chat with you about uh, you know what's going on with Apple News and everything, and your opinions on that for the yeah. After Dark too for our Patreon supporters, of course. And of course, uh, John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitter, ChillaTech.net, John Chichilla on the Facebook. Just coming at you in the internet on Internet Explorer. Uh, <laughs> and I, I ended up I, I sponsored that Kickstarter game. So if you do the How Yin's banging, I'm in for an episode. Yes. There you go. <laughs> Katie Dud- Katie or Dutters? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Who are you this week? I don't know. You, you did a, a pretty cool podcast. It's been getting a lot of um, um, response last week. Yeah. If you want to give a plug for that. Oh, gosh, yeah. It's Garrow's podcast. We had... Um... Oh, no, not that one. Oh, which one? Oh, I was, <laughs> I was talking, talking about the other one. one. Uh, no, no, that's about, also on the network. That tell me about that one, too, sword. but I, I didn't know what's going on with that one, but oh, that's gosh. not where I was going. Oh, jeez. Oh, don't pay attention to me on your network. I... <laughs> It's my pretty, heart is broken. Listen, I got like five hours in a car tomorrow. I want to find out what's going on in my network. You know what I do when I'm in a car ride? I find out what podcasts are on my network. <laughs> Bardic Mystery Tour, what's up? Thrifty, what's up? Scarehouse Podcast, what's up? Comic Book Pit, tell me how end, end game ended. Uh, anyway, so what's going on? Did you miss any <laughs> Uh, yeah, so last week um, we decided to do uh, on the indie wrestling show, indie mayhem wrestling. We talked about social media mm-hmm. and wrestling, and um, got a lot of good responses. I think with that, and oh, a absolutely. lot of people found it very interesting and insightful, which is exciting. So, what's going on with Scarehouse? What's it? Oh, yeah, um, Friday and Saturday this weekend we have um, a spring basement event. Ooh, uh, I'm so 18... sad I'm out of town for this one. Oh, two I... days only. I know. I think Ron, I, uh, Ronnie's here for the uh, next podcast. He's marking out back there. He's the first one that messages me when he gets your emails. <laughs> like, hey. He's like, guess what I'm doing? <laughs> they come for me. You can feel very special. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, friends. But yeah, it's uh, this uh, Friday and Saturday only, 7 to 11 p.m. It's in. Basement is 18 and over. Got to sign a waiver. Uh, but it's good times. I think it's fun. We're bringing back a lot of uh, character fan favorites, so people are pretty excited about that. I did get to do it one year, and it, it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun um awesome awesome my mom is apparently my mom is apparently watching this while she's at band practice (laughs) on the side so uh, he's like mom have him give you music with more parts please uh so (laughs) her battery's low right now um please go check out everything at sorgatronmedia.com awesomecast.com Sophia caught us. I don't know if it worked. We set up some live streaming on, on our Awesome Cast Networks. This is our first week trying that out. It's usually on the Sorgatron Media outlets. Uh, so uh, make sure you're following us on all the great stuff and Sorgatron Media for the replay feed on all the uh, uh, media platforms out there as well. Please go check out Pittsburgh Current. Thank you to producer Missy and everybody that's been in the chat room, including uh, Amanda uh, with Bold Pittsburgh and my mom. And uh, Dave Potter of the Tidy Shutter Podcast and Crazy Krause, uh, amongst others that have been popping in throughout the night. Uh, so, BC Steel, what's up? Uh, we'll see you guys next time. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.